Hi, hi, hi! I finally decided what projects I'm going to do and how I'm going to start my own fine production studio for comics and animations. But first, I need to make proof of concepts and, you know, the things that will actually propel the studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a Bible. Not that. A story Bible also known as a show bible or a production bible and when pitching the series before it picked up it is a pitch bible is a document used to portray the overall product the characters the character arcs episodes seasons and everything you wish to put into the tv show that is prominent and extremely relevant it is comprised of multiple components usually not more than 20 pages for a pitch bible but for a production bible or a series that's already been picked up and expanded upon can be longer and more in depth. They're used in the entertainment industry, particularly in television, film, and animation, which is what I shall be doing. It serves as a reference and pitching tool for writers, producers, and the creators, containing detailed information about the world and the narrative to showcase all the potential that the project can have. So nearly every show has a production Bible. This includes character sheets and storyboards, but here's a comprehensive overview of what a story Bible should contain. It starts with an overview, an introduction, providing a brief summary of the project, the concept, the genre, general themes. It's meant to grab the executive's attention or whoever's reading them, to give them a sense of what to expect in a log line, which is a concise one or two to three sentence summary of the project's core premise. Often used as a quick pitch to, you know, peak interest. Sometimes it's just a synopsis of the show, but it also includes a more detailed synopsis afterwards. A summary of the main plot, key events and character arcs, an overview of the entire narrative or where you want the narrative to go. The setting, the world building, which includes time period, location, societal rules, and any unique or fantastical elements you want to throw into the production that will make it into the show, such as maps, diagrams, concept art even, and especially the characters. Profiles of the main characters, a few paragraphs or even pages with visual references about what they're about, their personalities, their potential backgrounds, their names, motivations, and relationships can all be included here. And for the thing I'm doing, which is an animated show, art is a key factor in the story bible. You must give the vibe of what the overall show is going to look like. Some story bibles change drastically from conception to production to execution and final product. It will also include an episodic breakdown. After the character designs, character sheets, which may even include references to other properties to be like, hey, this is like, you know, it's like Rick and Morty mixed with yada yada yada. Or this character is like that character in this specific instance in that way. Just to help give more information based on what already exists. After the characters, there'll be episodic breakdowns and story synopsis about the TV show and where it will land episode by episode. Whether it'll be episodic or serial have an overall storyline, yada yada. It outlines the major events and character developments, as well as the themes and tone, their overall mood, and philosophical messaging you want to convey. This helps with the project's overall emotional impact in the artwork and visual references, concept art, illustrations that help visualize key scenes. Even storyboards could be included to help give a grasp of how the characters move how the characters interact with the settings or other characters. The Bible must convey the project's overall visual style and atmosphere for an animated show, even including sample of scripts or excerpts like a character's catchphrase. Usually, but not always, a sample of scripts or excerpts from the screenplay for the pilot will be included or given separately. And lastly, you gotta include what the market is, what your audience, what do you think the target audience and the potential viewership for this project will be. Because you can make a lot of things, but if you don't have a view of who's going to see it, 
mm, you might fail to reach that audience. So in short, a, series, a story bible serves multiple purposes. It can be used to pitch a potential project to investors, networks, studios, or even collaborators to get them involved. It serves as reference for the writers and artists working on the project, ensuring a consistency in character traits, setting, and in narrative elements. Throughout its development, there'll be something called a writer's bible, which many shows adapt to keep the tone, pacing, and overall vibe of the characters intact, no matter who's working behind the scenes. Nowadays, you could just create a pilot or a short reel as a proof of concept alongside the Bible by showing it to potential viewers or readers before it's even made. And once the show is picked up, the Pitch Bible becomes a series Bible to a production Bible, a living document for you to track what happens inside every single season. So let's look at a few examples. I'm making three this month for Worm Devourers, The Boy in the Castle Tower, and Shatid, The Reluctant Hero, which is the only animated one, completely derivative of all the shows I grew up loving, especially on Cartoon Network, and mainly inspired by my rewatching of Adventure Time. So let's look at some series Bibles, starting with Adventure Time. The pitch bible for Adventure Time is full of colorful doodles and character. Starting with the overview of Finn and Jake and then going into the Finn character. I like the split that dude in half portion. I haven't really seen that on any other bibles that I've looked at. Of course it opens with detailing the characteristics of Finn and Jake. Even that Finn doesn't know his origin story. And that Jake is one of the coolest dogs around. So it follows the overview, characters, and then it goes into character dynamics with Marceline and Princess Bubblegum. Now I'm really amused by the writing. A lot of the writing in the story bible is indicative of the tone and language used inside the story itself. Like mathematical in the Ice King being a bad egg. Not nice. Even the Lynch King made it to the pitch bible though he's not very prominent until more later on in the series as a reoccurring overarching villain to take down. And after all the main characters and main side characters introduced that have a hold over the overarching plot, we go into the locations and the map. The map of Oo and the locations that will be used. A nice concept doodles into episodes and synopsis. I'm currently watching all of Adventure Time starting today later on stream where I'll be streaming every day. So if you want to watch Adventure Time and go through much more of the lore alongside the story, join me on Twitch. As you see Adventure Time's story bible follows the overview, characters, location, episodes, and writing. It even ends with some fan art since the pilot was made and thrown around giving it life and internet presence and early fans which most stories have to do these days since you know since it's hard to really make something without having some sort of following already next let's go to the ed ed and eddie one of my favorite shows on the cartoon network and someone has started lawn mowing so i apologize for that background noise the buzz but puberty puberty is unforgiving ed and eddie Starts with an overview of the Eds, then pages dedicated to their bombastic, conniving, and idiotic personalities. And art style is very key for animation. You would like the characters to stay on model as much as possible unless you have an extremely over-exaggerated style, such as Ed and Eddie. But they even show how to do that, with a right and wrong guide, usually on how the faces and hands should be constructed. And it follows the same little overview, even though this is less of a pitch bible, more of a model pack to show what the characters will be like and the environment that they reside in. And since art style is very important, let's look at a bunch of model packs, starting with the replacements, because it has a good guide of yes and no in character expressions. A model pack can be included in the story bible or a little bit separate because it's more in depth on the character, their turnarounds, their walking cycles, how they talk, 
how their mouth moves, and how their fingers are, which can take up a lot of unnecessary pages for the Bible. But in the production, it is extremely important. One of my favorites is the K and D, Kid Name Codename Kiss Next Door, which was one of my favorite shows ever. Which includes a lot of, no, don't draw it like this, yes, this is how it's drawn properly. From turnarounds to walk cycles, to the poses the characters have, to showcase their personality. Because personality is key to relatability. If no one can relate or enjoy the art style of your thing, then the chances of people liking it are slim. I'll be talking more and more about character design and development throughout the first week of September because I haven't finished my own character development for my stories. And in order to create, you must already know what exists. So I'll be going through scripts as well, all live on the Twitch for the 100 day journey. Now let's look at one of the greatest and longest production Bibles I've seen, The Batman, the animated series which goes pretty in depth and has a lot of backgrounding lore being that Batman has been a comic book character since the late 1930s. It includes pretty high definition character models and art as well as extremely detailed and multifaceted descriptions and anecdotes for the characters and their overarching arcs as well as some glorious drawings for the environment as superhero shows in the western world are by far the best drawn and animated but i still feel like we should it's not the healthiest to always compare yourself to others but i do think that the overall anime art style has a much higher skill cap than what we have here in america so i think my drawing skills are good enough to start these projects and even the Batman follows the format of overview, then characters, locations, episode list. So that is the format I will stick to. First, the main art and log line, then description, then characters, locations, potential episodes, and future arcs. And that's it. And this video also starts the daily videos for real for real. They'll be about art, my drawing process and progression, as well as tutorials and tips. Though I am not as good as some other people, so I shall highlight a lot of other artists that are better than moi. Akuna Matata? And if you don't know, that's how I say goodbye. Please subscribe and watch my things in the future. Go to the Fine Animation channel to see the animations I did last year. Because I'm only getting better.